Thank you, Vice Chairman Udall. Are there other opening statements? If not, we'll now swear on the witness. Uh, Rear Admiral Wiaki, would you please stand and raise your right hand? Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony that you shall give today shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the penalty of perjury? Thank you. you can be seated. I want to remind you that, that your full written testimony will be made part of the official record. But with that, um, Admiral, we welcome your opening statement. Thank you, Chairman Hoven, Vice Chairman Udall, for the introduction. And to all members of the committee, I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. I'm joined today by my wife, Dr. Rose Wiaki, seated immediately behind me, uh, as well as my son, Nicholas, who's one of our three children. His sisters, Tamia and Sophia, are both engaged in finals this week. We're at the end of the semester and school commitments, uh, so they're both out west. Uh, my mother, Glenda Weddle, my brothers, Charlie and Tim Wiaki, my sister, Jessica, and her husband, Corey Weddle, as well as several other friends, colleagues, and family members who've traveled here to Washington, D.C. to support me during today's hearing. I'd also like to acknowledge and honor my father, Jim Wiaki, who could not be here with us today as he's undergoing chemotherapy treatment back in Phoenix. First, let me say that it's an extreme honor and I'm humbled to be here today. I'm very grateful for your consideration of my nomination by President Trump to serve as the next director of the Indian Health Service. I wanna thank all of the tribal leaders, all of the urban Indian organization leaders, the National Indian Health Stakeholder Organizations, professional colleagues, and my IHS team members for the outpouring of support that I've received over the past two and a half years that I've served as the Principal Deputy Director and the Acting Director of the Indian Health Service. As I reflect back on the significant points in my life that I believe helped to contribute to where I sit today, I'm continually reminded of the many people whose influence played a part in shaping the person that I've become and the path that, I, that has led me here. From my mother, Glenda, I learned the importance of a strong work ethic and of selfless service. From my father, Jim, I inherited my Indianness in being Zuni, and I learned the value of culture and traditions and of having a good sense of humor in life. My maternal grandparents instilled in me a strong Christian faith and a desire for service which led me to follow in my grandfather's footsteps and enlist in the Air Force. Remembering my paternal grandparents, my uncle and my aunt, who were all taken away from our family way too early, I'm reminded of the terrible toll that diabetes and heart disease, alcoholism and hepatitis C have inflicted upon our native people and why the healthcare path that I have chosen as my life's work is so very important. This committee is well aware that American Indians and Alaska Natives are impacted disproportionately in comparison to the general U.S. population for many different diseases and health conditions. And my family is not immune and is representative of the issues that our patients face throughout Indian country. As was mentioned, I was born in one of our Indian Health Service hospitals on the Navajo Reservation in Shiprock, New Mexico. I've been a lifelong user of our system and many of my family members continue to receive their care and treatment at our IHS, tribal, and urban Indian organizations. The IHS has transition, transitioned dramatically in many ways since its creation back in 1955, but there's still much work to do to adequately meet the needs of our patients. The mission of the Indian Health Service is to raise the physical, mental, social, and spiritual health of American Indians and Alaska Natives to the highest level. And it is our responsibility to uphold the federal government's obligation to promote healthy American Indian and Alaska Native people, communities, and cultures, and to honor and protect the inherent sovereign rights of tribes. It's a noble mission, and it's my why for working in Indian health, and it keeps me energized to come in and to work and face the many challenges that confront us each and every day. As is evident from recent news stories, our agency continues to face many challenges including the need to recruit and retain qualified healthcare professionals, to maintain aged facilities and meet certification and accreditation requirements, and to overcome community issues like inadequate housing, jobs, a lack of transportation, and other social determinants of health that need attention throughout Indian country. In partnership with tribes and urban Indian organizations, 
we've developed a comprehensive and aggressive five-year strategic plan for the Indian Health Service that's focused on expanding access to care, improving the quality of the care, and improving the management and operations of the agency. In the past two years, we've made significant strides to remove the Indian Health Service from the Government Accountability's Office high-risk list, implementing 12 of the 14 open recommendations that help to land the agency on the list. We've transitioned the Rosebud Indian Hospital from a facility that was on the brink of decertification by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to now being fully accredited by the Joint Commission. And just last week, CMS conducted a recertification survey of the Pine Ridge Indian Hospital, and we look forward to sharing the results of that survey soon. If I am fortunate enough to be confirmed by the Senate, I promise to be guided by the core values of integrity and transparency. I pledge to faithfully execute the laws written by Congress and to be responsive to your questions regarding the agency. We cannot solve everything at once, but we can make a positive, real, and lasting difference in the lives and health of our patients. And we can make what some say is impossible, possible. Thank you for your consideration of my nomination, and I look forward to answering your questions today.